Hello friends, welcome to this session of audio conferencing. This is online learning, but in a different way we learn as matures. This is part of teleconferencing. Let us first understand what is teleconferencing. Teleconferencing is a meeting of experts or people with matching maturity and IQ levels that takes place in a virtual real time setting with the help of computer or telephone technology between two or more people at a distance. Now as the definition explains, it is a group activity. It is some kind of conversation between people who are matching in their maturity level and also in their thinking level. This is conferencing. It is teleconferencing because groups are at different places. Look at this next slide and you will understand how does teleconferencing work. This is one group at one place, another group at another place and so on. Now assume that these groups are from different countries. Look at the arrow going from both the side. Can you make out that every group is talking to every other group? This exactly is teleconferencing, wherein in real time situation, that is at the same time, they can talk to each other, they can see each other and also share their views as if they are in a face to face situation. At present what you are doing, you are listening and seeing me. Will you call it as teleconferencing? No, this is one to one talk between you and me, but this is only one way. So teleconferencing has to happen two way. It is a two way communication. Let us see some more features of teleconferencing. It is a system of exchanging information. Then real time communication that is at the same time we are exchanging our thoughts, our views and sharing our experiences. It is a two way communication as I said that what we are doing just now is not the conferencing because it is one way communication. Holistic system of communication, why holistic because everybody can talk to everybody. Teleconferencing can be of three types, audio conferencing, video conferencing or data or computer conferencing. Now as the names suggest, audio conferencing will happen only when different groups come together at distance, but they will be just hearing each other. Video conferencing will happen when they can see each other and data conferencing or it can also be called as text conferencing, wherein the conferencing takes place only through text. So the text exchange takes place. Our focus for this session today is audio conferencing. Now, as I said, audio conferencing is something to do with hearing each other. Let us find out from this definition what exactly is audio conferencing. It is a live two way conversation among groups at different locations connected by telephone lines or satellite, which requires a special microphone amplifier device that is voice activated at each location. Now we all have telephones at home. You must have experienced it also that at a time you talk to your two friends from different location. Will you call it as conferencing? Yes, you guessed it right. It is conferencing provided it is something to do with learning. Then it becomes audio conferencing learning. Audio conferencing can take place between two people at distance or between group of people at distance as we have earlier seen. Now let us see two types of audio conferencing. There are two types of audio conferencing. The first one is meeting individuals at distance. Individuals at each place take part in the discussion on the topic using telephone lines and computer networking. We have already seen that how two or more individuals can converse through telephone lines. Now computer networking also can be used and I think you must have used it also when you wanted to talk to each other. Do you know about Hangout or Skype? 
but in such applications you can see each other also but there is one option wherein the video can be disabled let's see how whichever channel you use for uh, audio conferencing it can be used for two purposes one is as a whole learning process and another one is as part of your learning process now as i told you conferencing is not something that somebody will teach you and you will learn it is something that you already know and then you are conversing on that to enrich your knowledge so it can happen as part of uh, your learning process or as a complete learning process let us now discuss about different stages of audio conferencing the very first stage is planning now audio conferencing is not a very simple thing it requires lot of efforts it requires lot many things to do it requires moderator it requires to assemble the participants the planning will include time duration number of students because you have to see the feasibility of conducting audio conferencing too many numbers also can create some kind of chaotic situation then we have to plan for the number of centers and distance between the centers because it is an electronic communication and that is why these things have to be kept in mind the nature of assembly whether it is individuals or groups they are conversing with each other that is also very important because there are certain special gadgets that you will have to use then we have to also think of the places wherein there is ease of telecommunication networking now when we say audio conferencing it does not mean that you just keep on talking to each other and don't do anything there are certain support material that you can use like whiteboard sharing screen sharing make your ppt presentation and you can share that with other groups many things can be supported with your audio conferencing that will become more effective and easy for the participants to learn now the second stage is very important especially when you are using electronic gadgets when you are at distance groups are at different places what are the things that every group from their place should keep in mind is as shown in this slide the first one is room setup people are sitting together but you have to keep in mind that people from other side can see each and every member in that room so your sitting arrangement also should be made accordingly equipments are the channels through which we are going to hear each other it has to be very effective so that people will not think that they are at long distance and because of that there is no conversation happening you must be wondering why for learning you require pre prepared document but as i said earlier this is conferencing of knowledgeable people so you need to have prior knowledge about what you are going to talk and converse with each other the last and the most important aspect is practice prior rehearsals are important aspects of audio conferencing that will help us to identify what are the lacunae in the proper functioning of conferencing at different places and that can be rectified now at this stage you are in the conferencing session what are the things that you should keep in mind you have to make sure that every participant from different places is taking part in the conversation calling them by their first name is very essential part because in the virtual setting when you call somebody with their first name they immediately feel comfortable the moderator has to initiate the conversation otherwise there might be some kind of confusion that can be created who will talk first so that is the very important role of the moderator to initiate the conversation and the discussion then go ahead 
Before beginning the session, clear instructions should be given to every participant from all the parts. Not only that, controlling these participants is very essential so that there might not be any kind of uh, confusion that can be created if they are not controlled well. Use of supplementary aid can make your conferencing very effective. So, for the session when it is going on, these aspects given on the screen are very very essential. Recording of the session is very important because it will serve two purposes. One is sharing with others, those who have not participated and also for your practice. If you want to again go through it after the session, you can all do that. This is an advantage of any electronic communication. Look at the advantages of audio conferencing, accessibility, unity, real time, virtual presence, active participation cost effective, saves time, active learning and wider e-learning. These are all global advantages that audio conferencing will provide over face to face situation. Audio conferencing has these many advantages, it has no limitation, but there might be some barriers if audio conferencing is not handled properly. There might be intercommunication gap. There might be some problems with your electronic gadgets. There might be some problem with managerial arrangement and there might be some problem if participants are not prepared. However, these barriers can easily be removed if you are well prepared, if you are well organized and you know your job very well. Thank you.